Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am the Reverend Karen Davis Lawson, and I will be the celebrant for today's service of St. Joseph's Episcopal Church of Queens Village being held at St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Belrose. Welcome to everyone. Our first hymn is 645, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
Jesus is the good shepherd of your people. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that, the, that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read alternative verses of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He is in my ground in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along the right pathway for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the way. in them, 
And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord.
If you are tuning in to St. Joseph's service, you're in the right place. Today, our clergy are doing a kind of musical chairs with our pulpits, and we're all uh, at different congregations. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and often on this Sunday, we are focused on the temperament of the sheep and their tendency to wander, their tendency to get lost. The good news is that God is a good shepherd who will diligently search for lost sheep. The gospel is part of a wider context of the healing of the man born blind. Jesus heals the man on the Sabbath. The synagogue officials question the man and his parents about his miraculous healing. His parents confirm that he was born blind, but they do not want to admit that they know Jesus because they are afraid of being cast out of the synagogue. The man testifies that Jesus is responsible for his healing and that Jesus is a prophet. His testimony gets him driven out of the synagogue. After being cast out, Jesus finds the man, and after speaking with him, the man becomes his disciple. The man becomes part of Jesus' community of followers. The community offers kinship and security. Just like the man born blind, the pandemic cast us out of our church buildings. Many congregations have returned to their buildings, but St. Joseph's does not have a building to return to. And yet, the church persists and exists. St. Joseph's exists because the church is not the building. The church, we, the building we call a church, is a sacred space set aside for the faithful to gather for worship and fellowship. The gathering of the faithful, the people of God assembled in worship and ministry, is the church, the body of Christ. Jesus, the good shepherd, promises to find us wherever we are and to bring us into the fold where we will be nurtured, protected, and have abundant life. We will have love, fellowship, and relationship. In the Gospel, Jesus tells the crowd, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In Jewish tradition, a shepherd is a royal term. And a good shepherd refers to the Messiah who will set God's people free. I am is God's name. The name revealed to Moses when God commissions him to bring God's people out of Egypt. And we, created in God's image and likeness, are the sheep in this parable. We tend to wander and get lost, everyone wanting to do their own thing. God, the Good Shepherd, laid down his life for us by stepping out of eternity into time and becoming a human being in the form of Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus gave up his life on the cross, his arms stretched wide, waiting to embrace us. Psalm 23 tells us about the Good Shepherd, and it is often the song that is used at funerals. At her request, this song was sung at my mother's funeral. I didn't appreciate it then, but now, upon many years of reflection, it provides comfort. There is comfort in knowing that God knows each of us intimately. 
out of the billions of people in the world, that's with a B, billions, God knows everything there is to know about you and me. We are not anonymous to God. God knows the good, the bad, the ugly, and the things we don't even know about ourselves. Because remember, God knit us together in our mother's womb. Psalm 23 describes God's care and authority and what that means to us, his children. The psalm tells us that God is the shepherd who provides. God makes us lie down in green pastures. God leads us to still waters. Food and water. God restores our soul. Leads us to righteousness. God is with us, even in the valley of the shadow of death. God provides comfort. God prepares a table for us even in the presence of our enemies. God anoints us with oil, the oil of gladness, the oil of consecration as a child of the King. God follows us with goodness and mercy. Certainly a psalm of comfort. No matter how crazy or difficult or stressful or scary our lives may be, God chooses each of us. God loves us, accompanies us, and will hold on to us through all of life. And even through death, God accompanies us into resurrected life a life that is offered to each of us. The psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And the truth is, we want many things. I want to lose 15 pounds. <laughs> Some of us want more money because we believe that will solve all of our problems. Some of us want power and influence. We want a new church building. What does the shepherd provide if not what we want? What we want is not always best for us. Many of us are comfortable find comfort in knowing that God, the Good Shepherd, is with us in the ups and downs of life. We find comfort in knowing that God's love never lets us go. Yet, we may have difficulty with the psalm because there are many who are food insecure, or homeless, or wrongly incarcerated. There are wars and protests and natural disasters. How can God be a good shepherd when there is so much need? The abundant life that Jesus talks about is not necessarily about long life or wealth or status or accomplishments or even world peace. This life is life that is abundant in the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. It is an act of love that overflows to the other. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. This abundant life is eternal life because its source is in God who is eternal and in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Each of us is called to a personal relationship with Jesus, the Good Shepherd. No matter what craziness is going on around us, 
God is with us. The shepherd restores the soul and safely leads us from one pasture to another. Elizabeth Johnson says, amidst all the other voices that evoke fear, make demands, or give advice, the voice of the Good Shepherd is a voice of promise, a voice that calls us by name and claims us as God's own. Dear people of God, God will not abandon you. God has not abandoned you. Among all the other voices that evoke fear, make demands or give advice, the voice of the Good Shepherd is the voice of promise, a voice that calls you by name and claims you as God's own. Amen. Amen. Amen.
nice increase. Page 358 in the Book of Common We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We have knowledge on baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The praise of the people can be found on page 388, form 4. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightfully in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. The prayer for the church. God, hear our prayer for this parish family, St. Joseph Episcopal Church of Queens Village. Strengthen the faithful, Revive the inactive, restore the penitent, and inspire us for a mission. Grant to us all things necessary for our common life. Provide for our ministries and bring us to unity of heart and mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. From the prayer list, we'll call only the first name. Keisha, Daphne, Michael, Bill, Melissa, Kevin, Natalie, Idris, Allison, Agatha, Justin, Renee, Rose, Misha, Marina, Edward, Christine, Alfreda, Sade, Hyacinth, Deja, Henry, Georgia, 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 John, Marshall, Perpetua, Monica, Simone, 
how you will write a writer, Claudette, Layton, Desmond, Judy, James, Arthur, Harold, Ruthlin, Kim, Kim, Noah, Jolene, Joel, Marlon, Madeline, George, John, Marcia, Lorraine, Anthony, Barbara, the Maxfield family, Marie, Sister Sheila, Cesare, Dorothy, Rona, Larry, Rosalind, Marie, Crystal, Kathleen, Norma, and Mary, Beverly, Jonathan, Sonde, Audley, Daphne, Harris, Desiree, Yuli, Greta, Verily, Leonard, Sandra, Doreen, Joy, Maureen, Gloria, Rosa, Clarence, Diane, Avril, Deborah, Rosalind, Maureen, Peter, David, Lois, George, Marilyn, Dolores, Tarion, Hansel, Beverly, Audia, Mary, Rupert, Pat, Willisie, Pat. Are there others you want to name? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all those who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, rule of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
baptizer in your hand, let us pray for the prayer of these, your servants, as they begin another year. We pray, Lord, that you will also touch those who may be joining us via live stream. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
time where we ask you to dig into your pocketbooks or pull out your <laughs> devices. We, we, we take Venmo and Zelle and Cash App, <laughs> PayPal, okay. Um, this is where we offer the fruits of our labor to the Lord. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vow. 
come and be your Lord and of thine own help. Stop. 
them, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
and made us his children through the resurrection of his son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into new life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our Okay. okay, please be seated for the announcement. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. First, let me say a heartfelt thank you to Mother Karen for accepting the call to be our um, officiant today. You're welcome. Your good, your good Shepherd message was very inspiring, and I hope that everyone take it out this week, and that may be uh, some type of comfort to you as you go through the week. We have a few notices today. A few. Um, the first one is um, happy birthday to Orin Adams, who celebrated a milestone on Wednesday, April the 17th. May God continue to bless them with mercies, grace, love, strength, and happiness, and many more birthdays to come from his wife, and Roxanne, and children, Cherise, Isaac, Isaiah, and Christina. Christiana. The Sunday School would also like to ask for God's blessing upon Cameron Sledge and Johan Jordan Sams, who will be celebrating April birthdays. Cameron celebrated his on Thursday, the 18th, and Jordan will celebrate hers on April, well, April the 20th is gone, so celebrating hers on April the 20th. Next week, um, the 28th, the coffee hour will be sponsored by the Fundraising and Finance Committee. Please all come out to um, get an update from the Fundraising and Fundraising Committees. I'll reach on May the 11th, they'll be doing a drive, and you're asked to support this drive on the lawn of St. Jo Joseph Rectory. Okay, so there will be a food and security drive on the lawn of St. Joseph Rectory on Saturday, May the 11th, from 9 to 11 to 1 p.m. For further information, please contact Norma Byfield. The fundraising committee is having a pre-Father's Day event on June the 7th, 2024. Um, this event will be at VFW Post 1790, 65 East Merritt Road, Valley Stream. The price of the ticket is only $65, so please bring out the men in your life and celebrate with us. You have dinner, DJ, and a cash bar. Please join us. We also talk more about that next week. Um, our own Arrow Carton Byfield Scholarship Foundation. The foundation is extending an invitation to all prospective college or trade school bond students. The foundation would award three scholarships. An essay of 300 to 400 words would decide eligibility. There are two topics from which one will be chosen. Along with the essay, a biography and two references are required. Deadline for the entries is June the 28th, 2024, and the award will be $1,500. So each recipient will receive $1,500. Okay. We'll also have a ceremony on August the 23rd at the same location, VFW Post 1790, 65 East Merrick Road, Valley Stream, Maryland. The topics will be 
how do you believe this scholarship will help you achieve your goals? Or tell us about a time you were positive you were a positive influence in your community. Tell us about a time you were a positive influence in your community. So please ask your uh, friends, family, anyone that you, you know within the community. But we're not limited limited only to St. Joseph parishioners, but anyone within the deanery can also apply for the scholarship. It's fifteen hundred each. There were some additional notices in the bulletin, so please read them. And there's one about the shooting that occurred and the diocesan um, involvement in that, so please read. So as everybody, as everyone know, we the vestry, the precinct, the interim precinct charge for the Fred and the wardens, we all met with the right reverend Bishop Lawrence Provisano and Ellen Shine on uh, last Tuesday. So Father Fred wrote a letter for the wardens to share. It's a report of what occurred plus his own insight at the end. He says, report to the church on the best street dinner meeting with the Bishop, Provisano, and Ellen Chan. Our interim precinct charge, wardens and vestry, had a dinner meeting with the Right Reverend Bishop Lawrence Provisano and Ellen Louis Chain, our asset manager, concerning the rebuilding of St. Joseph. It was an inspiring, illuminating, as well as sobering meeting. Bishop Provisano shared that the rebuilding of the church in Queens Village will happen, but it will take time as there are no developers as yet with regards to having a school or housing project. But he acknowledged that our property is, a very, is very valuable and that there may be a number of options that will be presented in the near future. While the bishop asked for patience in waiting, he also emphasized the role of the best three as representatives of the church to work in partnership with the bishop and the clergy. The vestry and lay people must have greater responsibility in the judiciary matter and temporal properties of the church. The vestry and lay people must be fully involved in the decisions, care, and upkeep of the temporal properties. While not blaming anyone, he commented that the deterioration of the former property was partly due to this lack of proper management and clergy lay partnership. To ensure this process, the rebuilding of a new edifice must therefore have this dance of partnership from the beginning to the end. Having our own building in addition to a thriving ministry is a huge responsibility. Many churches have been forced to close down due to membership decline, inability to pay the clergy, sustain their ministry, and to maintain their buildings. As St. Joseph is still a church on the way, let us strengthen our spiritual foundations so that we will be fully equipped to do the work of the ministry. Your vestry, in collaboration with the Finance, Fundraising, and Focus Committee on Your Building, is now reviving our fundraising efforts that have been halted in the past. We hope that from our end, we will be able to build a proportional capital funds that can be used for these efforts rather than relying fully on the diocese. The bishop will plan with Father Fred a Sunday when he can come to our worship service and instead of a sermon, he will dialogue with the congregation about the state and future of St. Joseph. We will also plan for a dialogue of the parish with our neighbors living in the surrounding area.
Meantime, start a friend. We shall keep our membership growing, our commitment deeper, and our giving generous. We are making you history, and we hope and pray that it will be better than the old, more secure, and more in tune with the changing times. Where God guides, God provides. God's work done in God's way and in God's time will never lack provision. Father Fred, your interim priest in charge. My brothers and sisters, my entire St. Joseph family and friends, keep trusting and believing and God will do his will in his time. We just have to put in the effort and try, right? Because but the bishop did say that we, he, um, let me just quote it again so that you hear it. No, not we can Sometimes it's good to pause. Pause and reflect a little because everybody heard what I said before, just pause. Right, and reflect. Right? Bishop Provenzano shared that the rebuilding of the church in Queens Village will happen. Right. Okay, so you need to go to the other part where it says that, right, on the entire letter, right? Go to the other part where it talks about first thing, we couldn't do it before because we didn't get what? No developer to help us with the school project as well as the housing, right? said there are other options out there, but we will talk about it at some point in the future. But more importantly that, we have the hope is that from our end, this is from Father Frank to us and from, I believe the best three as well, because we're all in the same meeting. We will be able to build, we're hoping to build a capital fund. We have to look at capital fund that can be used for these efforts rather than relying on the diocese for all the funding for a new church building. Thank you. I think Robert wants to say something about Earth Day. Good afternoon, St. Joseph's. Good afternoon. Today, we observe Earth Day. Earth? Or tomorrow, but today we, 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 it's our service today, so we mentioned it today. Before I start, I'll ask um, Pearl just to say something. It'll be two parts. I won't be long. So, Pearl first, then. Yes, please. It's going to be my parts, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Tomorrow, April the 22nd, is Earth Day. We all know that this Earth that we all occupy, all humans occupy, is in trouble. Our oceans are in trouble. There are floating masses of plastic that are the size of small islands. Our rivers are in trouble from pollutants from agriculture. Our land is in trouble from pollutants from chemicals. Our air is in trouble from pollutants. So um, today I'm going to talk about one aspect of what we can all do in terms of helping to save our planet. And I'm going to talk about composting in particular. The major components of a landfill are food makes up 24%. Food is considered waste. Plastics make up 18%. Believe it or not, we put plastics and cardboard out every week, only 9% of 
of plastic is actually recycled. Paper and cardboard, 12%. Rubber, leather, and textiles, 11%. And other materials, less than 10%. If you add the food waste, paper, and cardboard together, that is 36% of everything that goes into a landfill. Paper, food, food waste and paper and cardboard are 100% compostable. Okay? So in this light, the New York City Department of Sanitation's goal is to have zero waste in landfills. So that means that that 36% has to be compostable. As a result, the New York City Compost Project was launched. What is compost? <coughs> compost is a dark, crumbly, soil-like material. In nature, compost happens by itself. As plant materials break down and form humus, the rich organic component of soils. The breakdown occurs due to the work of many living creatures. By understanding how this process works, we are able to control and manage it to get the results we want. How did the New York City Department of Sanitation do this? First, they enlisted many partners. Parks, the three botanical gardens in the metropolitan area, the New York Botanical Garden situated in the Bronx, the Brooklyn Botanical Garden, the Queens Botanical Garden, and many other sites. They instituted training based did the master composter program to help in educating, in educating the public, particularly those who run community gardens. They set up food scrap drop-off sites, and these are mainly for apartment gardens. The New York City Department of Sanitation, if you live in any of the five boroughs, distributed those brown containers. Those are for composting and composting only. A lot of people have, said, people have said that if we put school food scraps into this container, then every time the sanitation department picks it up, we have, to, we have to wash the container. No, you don't. You are allowed to line the container with clear plastic. Okay? Um, beginning in October of this year, all five boroughs would have received curb, would have received curbside bins, and composting will become mandatory and you will be issued a fine if they find compostable stuff in your trash, okay? So these bags are 100% compostable. So if you have, now the New York City Department compost bone, meat, cheese, all the things that you really cannot compost in a, in a backyard composter. Now, if you clean your meat and stuff, and you don't want to put it into the bin right away, you can get some of these. These are 100% compostable. You put it in there, you freeze it, and then the day that you put out your trash, you just drop it into the container, okay? Um, the New York City Department of Sanitation will not, will not be giving out brown bins, because once they make the rounds of any one borrow, that's the end of it. I know for a fact, because when I went to pick up my certificate, I saw hundreds of brown bins. So I'm pretty sure that if you go directly to the main um, Department of Sanitation, you can get a brown bin, but they will not deliver it to you. Um, no, these are gifts for the master composer, but I have to tell you anything about that. Okay. okay. Um, remember now, remember we used to put out um, bulk items on the day that you put out your recyclables. That's no longer true. You put out the bulk your bulk items on the days that you do not put out them, which is the first pickup day of the week. And you do not have to call 311 anymore. You just put it out. The only things that are an exception for that are things that we contain a refrigerant, like refrigerators and air conditioners. Um, I, believe you me, I have been composting
for the, maybe the last 15 years. And when I did this course, I realized that there were a few things I got correct and many things that I got incorrect. Okay, so um, if anyone has a compost bin or wants to set up their own personal compost bin, I have, um, I can help with that and I have a host of literature that I can share with you as well. So if anyone is interested, I made copies of some of the literature and I can help with that. But in terms of we are composting for the city, remember, come October, they don't see a brown bin and they find trash in your, in your um, they find compostable stuff in your trash, you will get a ticket. Pardon me? October. October. October, this year, this year. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Pearl. The second part. Everywhere we look in our culture, we will find this material. It surrounds our food, it makes our technology, and it is a standard element in our household items. Unfortunately, it is overflowing from our landfills, floating in our waters, and polluting our soil. More and more, we can find it in our own bodies and those of other living creatures. There have even been traces found in breast milk. Despite the fact that we have learned all the harms of this material, we are steadily increasing our production of the material and integrating it more and more in everyday items. This material is everywhere. And one person said that the only place you do not find this material or the mention of this material is in the Bible. Um, what is this material? This plastic, plastic. And Tomorrow we will celebrate, uh, not celebrate, observe Earth Day. And the global theme for Earth Day will be planet versus plastic. Planet versus plastic unites students, parents, businesses, government, churches, unions, individuals, and NGOs in an unwavering commitment to call for the end of plastic for the sake of human and planetary health. Demand in a 60% reduction in the production of plastic by 2040 and an ultimate goal in building a plastic free future for generations to come. I remember uh, years ago, uh, at the turn of the century, asbestos was the in thing. And today, we have to get rid of asbestos because it is Carcinogenic, carcinogenic, right? Carcinogenic. Um, there's a chemical in a um, uh, component of plastic which is PCB. I do not, I don't want to think that years to come, when we are gone and our generations to come, the people will say, "Oh, plastic is bad," right? So let us try to rapidly phase out all single-use plastic by 2030 and achieving the phase-out commitment worldwide. Plastic extends beyond an eminent environmental issue. They present a grave threat to human health as alarming as climate change. More than 500 billion plastic bags one million bags per minute were produced worldwide last year. Many plastic bags have a working life of a few minutes, followed by an afterlife of centuries. 100 billion plastic beverages containers were sold in the United States last year. That more than 300 bottles per inhabitant. 
it is found in some containers and could release more than 4 million microplastics and 211 billion nanoplastic within can release it uh, if you put uh, the plastic container in the microwave for just three minutes. And some, some plastic containers come with a warning, do not microwave. Some say you can microwave. But so I don't trust that sometimes. I tend to use glass. I use a lot of glass to microwave. We love to drink bottled water. And Oh, carry around a bottle of water, bottle of water here, bottle of water there, everywhere. But I can tell you, and I know as a fact, that New York City and New York has one of the best water in the United States. Yes. The only water that, that surpasses it is water that you get directly from the glaciers. So please put away those plastic bottles of water, especially when you have it in your car, and the sun heats of that plastic, it's not good for you. Just get an aluminum can, take it, where you go. Let us try to reduce the use of plastics. Uh, we can start right here by, when we go down to a coffee hour, we get rid of those plastics and, and use things that are beneficial to the environment. I do hope that next year we will have some testimonies of people telling us how they have reduced the use of plastic and we can all benefit from their experience and try to use less plastic that eventually will harm the environment. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.